everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Juliet. I'm a design lead at ScienceWorks. I usually work behind the scenes, but today I have the pleasure of interviewing our special guest today, Willie Clausen, an engineer who also works with robotics. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Um, would you like to give us a brief uh, description of what you do? Okay. Um, I'm the chief technologist at Schilling Robotics. It's a uh, part of uh, Technip FMC. Um, what we build are underwater robots, like uh, on the start of Titanic, uh, they send a robot down to the ship, and th those are the types of things we make. Um, they're primarily used in uh, salvage or science. Um, they're uh, mainly used on offshore oil exploration, um, but one of the latest up and coming things that they've been used for is um, wind farms. They're making wind farms offshore and they need these to install the wind farms. Um, anyway, I design and, and build the robots and the, or the robotic subs and the robotic arms that go on the front of them. I've been doing it for a little over 30 years. Very cool. Awesome. So at ScienceWorks, we love curiosity and investigation. Uh, we try to start all our projects by first asking a question. Um, so in your work, what is the question that you usually start off with? Oh, it depends quite a bit, but we, we work uh, very hard at figuring out what is it the question, and what's the question we're trying to answer? Um, because often people rush to an experiment without thinking what question they're answering. Um, some. I'll give you an example. They, the latest one that I worked on last week was um, how to go to 11,000 meters, which is the very bottom of the ocean. Um, how, um, what kind of umbilical cable would you need? Because we um, power the vehicles with electrical power, usually through an umbilical. It could be batteries, but these scientists want um, good video real time so they can stream it on the internet live. And so they need a fiber optic cable. So how do you build a cable that is 11,000 or 11,000 meters or 11 kilometers long um, and it hangs by itself in the ocean? How, how can you build one? So that was one of the questions. That is a good question. <laughs> and, and we have lots of questions like that because we have to take high pressure, corrosion, um, do a lot of things that have never been done before. So what is the most unusual or memorable project that you've worked on and why did it stand out? Oh, I've done a lot of interesting stuff. Um, one of them that stands out was the uh, challenge that got me my first patent. And that one, um, it's a little bit geeky, but um, it turned, it was designing a, a robotic arm um, that had rotary actuators so that the joints could move um, almost 360 degrees. Um, and in the hydraulic actuators, they always, um, in these vein actuators, they always leak a little bit. And we wanted to make it where we didn't have to have controls so you could turn it off and it would just hold position and nobody had ever done this with a vein actuator and so my challenge was to make this actuator have zero leaks and nobody had ever done it before and i came up with a solution where i put the seals not in between metal pieces but out in the fluid and it was a completely new way of sealing um, and it worked. And so we got a patent on it. So that one was pretty memorable. Um, another one that we patented um, that I worked on was we had to pass electrical signals from out in the seawater into a, a chamber that was one atmosphere. So we had like 10,000 PSI a fluid trying to get inside and we had to pass the signals in about it. Normally it's done by taking a piece of gla glass bead, putting a wire through it, heating it up, 
and putting it in a piece of metal and letting it all cool and it does a compression fit and you get one one wire going in each time you do that we figured out a way to use a pc board a regular pc board and make it part of the pressure vessel where we have the pc board and a, a pressure vessel on one side and a pressure vessel on the other side and they squeeze the pc board with up to 50,000 psi and the pc board is part of the structure and people thought we were completely crazy but it works wonderfully and then you you can have thousands of electrical connections going from the outside to the inside with just a cheap pc board you know anybody can build a pc board so again we patented that because it was so easy to copy and it saved so much money nice so being creative with your yeah solving the really tough problems um i've worked on a lot of neat projects where we um, some scientists in um, Germany wanted to take core samples, so rock cores of the bottom of the ocean. So they wanted a drill to drill cores in the bottom of the ocean. So I, I worked on that. Um, that was really interesting. I worked on a, a pump, a hydraulic pump for um, Hawaii Underwater Research Laboratory. It was in my early days. And when I went to install it, it had some problems. And we spent some time troubleshooting, and it, and it didn't work quite right when it was down deep. So I had to go down in the sub. That one was not a remote-controlled sub. That was a man sub. I got had to go down in the sub to see how it worked at the bottom, and that was pretty fun, you know. And we we found a uh, a torpedo. This is off of Hawaii, so we don't know if it was United States torpedo, Japanese torpedo. You know, it's right off a. Uh, um, Pearl Harbor, so it could have been either, um, but that was pretty interesting. And eventually that sub found one of the Japanese mini subs that was part of the attack on Pearl Harbor. So wow. wow. These are all really interesting things that I've worked on. Did you always plan to be an engineer when you were growing up? I did not plan to be an engineer growing up. I think my earliest ambitions for a career was a doctor. Um, I I love drawing things and I love science. And um, I have a, a drawing that I did of a submarine uh, of when I was about five. And I know in the fourth or fifth grade, I um, had an assignment to design a car. And I designed a van type of car that could go underwater. And it was a biological lab submarine <laughs> so <That's funny. laughs> for some reason i i kind of had that but i i loved airplanes i loved boats um and in high school um i i was concerned my math wasn't good enough to be an engineer and i thought well i was a really good artist but i loved science but i i went to school as an artist first and um but i was taking all these high level science classes with all the other engineers because I could have taken easier ones. But uh, eventually I realized all my friends were engineers. They were all graduating with engineering degrees and I realized I would be a better engineer than they would. And so I uh, took the math again in college and got that solid. And then um, once I did that, then I just accelerated. And um, by the time I graduated, I knew that engineering was for me. And so I graduated and went to work and never looked back. So what degree do you have uh, from college? I have a bachelor's of science degree from Chico State in mechanical engineering. And I graduated with distinction, which they give you with honors if you have really high grades. But I distinguished myself enough that they gave me a, a special uh, title for that and it was because I um, participated in their clubs quite a bit and we we won some competitions with other schools all over the country and uh, made it a uh, noteworthy contribution to the school so what kind of clubs did you join in college it was the mechanical engineering club and we we worked with this um, 
the Society of Plastic Engineers and the Manufacturing Engineers. There were three different clubs and the, the ASME, uh, the Mechanical Engineers, um, they had a competition for racing human powered vehicles. And so we got involved in that and I got involved in the very first year that they did it. And um, I realized that we needed help from the other clubs, the expertise that they had. And so we built this team of people from different clubs to work on this vehicle. And um, I didn't know it then, but that was collaboration and, you know, multidiscipline teams and all these things that are, are very hot these days. We just thought it was the right thing to do. And it worked successfully because the very first year we won the, the championship for the U.S. Very cool. Um, so what's the most enjoyable part of your work? The most enjoyable part of my work? Um, it's actually dealing with failures. Um, a lot of the engineers design things and when they don't work the way they think they should, that is actually quite interesting because uh, I think it was in one of the Star Wars movies, Yoda says, the best teacher failure is <laughs> because when you fail, you if you look into why it failed and understand it, you learn because you wouldn't have designed it that way if you knew better before. So obviously you didn't know it before. So when something doesn't work the way it's supposed to, you have a great opportunity to figure out something you didn't know. And um, it's also a mystery. It's like chase down the clues. Um, and a lot of times people will bring me broken parts and they ask me what happened. And I said, well, did you look at it under the microscope? They go, no. Well, you know, that's where the evidence is. This is what broke or, you know, what failed. If you don't know what happened, look at it as close as you can. And the microscope is one, one of the tools that people overlook sometimes. But anyway, find, you know, working on failures is actually quite interesting. So failures open up new opportunities and you share yeah. them. And, and you learn something from it. And it's also, you know, people come to me with problems. They've been stumped. And so it's kind of uh, it's nice to be able to help them figure out what went wrong, what really happened. And most of it is scientific um, methods. It's, uh, you know, eliminating, eliminating possibilities and looking at logic and looking at the the basic physics usually um, do some quick calculations to how could this physically happen, you know, and uh, it usually comes out fairly quickly, but some of them are very difficult. Um, so f solving problems is, is a big one. And then working with people is actually one of the nicest things. If you have a really good team that you're working with, that, that is uh, very gratifying. Uh, what advice would you give to students who want to become an engineer? Students that want to become an engineer. If you like science and you really like tinkering with things and solving problems, um, that is really good. You know, you, you're probably headed in the right direction. Also, um, join the clubs. Um, get some uh, experience really using that early. Because I found that because I was using the things I was learning in my designing this human powered vehicle, I actually remembered it better and learned was, I was like a sponge. I wanted to learn it faster so I could use it right, you know, that day or the next day. Um, so that's really good. And um, it's not all about grades. It's about learning it, it's about uh, learning how to work with other people. So clubs do that as well. Um, so it's all about getting that hands-on experience. I, I think that is very valuable to engineers. Engineers that don't have the hands-on feel or the feel for this stuff they work with um, are really missing something. And that's something you can do when you're in school. And it also, um, 
doing those things and showing that you're interested in engineering just in general is really good for your resume or when you're interviewing. Um, I've been on the other side of the interviews quite a bit. And if you really show that you're interested in the subject, um, that makes a difference. Uh, well, thank you for sharing your experience with us today. It was really interesting to learn more about what an engineer does and um, a little more about underwater robotics. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say before we go? No, I'm, I was happy to, to work with you and to share what an engineer does. Um, I think when I was in high school, I didn't even really understand what engineers do. So um, it is a very exciting uh, career. If you look around at all the things that uh, are around you, almost all of them are engineered. And engineers are the ones who actually make this stuff or design it take the physics and come up with designs so that all these things can exist. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. If you're interested in doing some engineering of your own, we have some really great tinkering projects on ScienceWorks Online. So go check those out using the link below and we'll see you next time.